Good morning, it's David from the Redneck Garage. And today is a little bit of a sad day because I believe I'm gonna probably have to discontinue the old YouTube channel because I'm starting a new business. Um, the locksmith business has been good, but in an effort to expand, I've decided to open a new business called Doctor Zone. Now in this business, people are gonna come to me because they don't wanna pay high prices to take to somebody that maybe has gone to school and learned something or has any experience so what I'm going to do is people are going to come to me and I'm going to diagnose their medical issues and give them advice and uh, I've got a cell phone I can look stuff up and uh, they can take that advice and then do it themselves. Doesn't that sound great? <laughs> so recently I've had some negative things to say about AutoZone employees and called them goose and you know that's not necessarily fair. In fact, full disclosure, I was the store manager for AutoZone 25 years ago, something like that. So I thought it would be fun to go back in time and just take a kind of look at the overall industry of auto parts stores. Now, if you go back in time and you look in the history books for a parts store back in, say, 1865 during the Civil War, there wasn't any. That's because there wasn't any cars. <laughs> Now the horse-drawn buggy days were about over in 1909 when Henry Ford released his Model T and it was one of the first mass-produced cars that had interchangeable parts. And with interchangeable parts, that meant you could send it to a store and it would fit somebody's Model T 200 miles away. So thus the advent of the parts store. Now as we talk about the history of parts stores, first parts stores were always the dealerships because they had the factory parts. Then you started having companies that started doing mail order and one of those was Western Auto. In 1909, they started selling parts through the mail order. By the early 20s, they started expanding to brick and mortar stores. And here's the interior of like a typical parts store. Now, you can tell by the guys wearing the suits and the ties that they weren't out putting batteries in anybody's cars or checking their wiper blades. <laughs> So fast forward probably up into the 60s, parts stores were pretty similar in nature. Uh, Do-it-yourselfers could go in as they catered to garages. Um, they didn't do any diagnostic work and they just sold parts. Now funny story, when I was a kid back in probably 1972 or 3, we went into this Western Auto store right here in Nashville, Tennessee. My dad had a 68 Chevy pickup truck and I was about 7 years old. Now my dad couldn't screw in a light bulb. So I watched my dad change the plugs on this 68 Chevy pickup truck. Even then I was a little bit mechanical and I watched him do it and I could tell that they weren't exactly right. They weren't like he took them off. He got two wires mixed up. Well I said, Daddy, those aren't right. Well he got mad and he said, shut up and be quiet. Truck didn't run worth a dang. It was jumping and bucking and so we drove it down to the Western Auto store and he, they pulled it into the bay in the back and they got the guy, the mechanic started looking at it. <laughs> he said, well, I see what your problem is. He said, uh, you got two of these wires mixed up. And my dad glanced over at me as if to say, don't say a dang thing. And I said, I told you that daddy. And then he took me out and spanked me because my dad was a jerk. <laughs> Anyway, Western Auto started their big decline. They were bought out by Sears. Um, they were pretty divested. A lot of the stuff they sold wasn't car parts. Now through December 1st, every Western Flyer bike is on sale at Western Auto. 12-speed and 10-speed racers, flashy high-rise buzz bikes, even our action-packed BMX and mag wheel bikes. Don't let this sale pass you by. Every Western Flyer bike is on sale now at Western Auto. Finally, the demise of Western Auto started going downhill when Sears owned them, and eventually Sears sold them to a well-known company called Advanced Auto Parts, who said, we really don't need them anymore, and that was the end of Western Auto. By 1979, Pitt Hyde, who was the chairman of Malone & Hyde, uh, the son of the owners, decided to create a new parts store called Auto Shack. And here's a commercial from them. To make sure my cooling system is protected, I put a fresh fill of Preston antifreeze in my car every fall. You should too. And there's no better time than right now. Because Auto Shack has an incredibly low price. That's right, only $2.97 a gallon. Now at Auto Shack, your discount parts supermarket. There's one near you to save you money. Well, Auto Shack's concept was pretty cool. It helped the do it yourself or, you know, it wasn't really geared towards the garages like Napa was or some of the other parts stores. So it took off really pretty quickly. And as a side note, in the early 80s, Auto Shack was sued by Tandy Corporation, which owned at the time Radio Shack, saying they were hurting the brand. Thus the reason Auto Shack 
became AutoZone. So went to a shack to a zone. <laughs> The current AutoZone really kind of evolved over the years through that. When I worked for AutoZone, we did test batteries, we did test alternators and starters. However, we did not install anything. We didn't put batteries in, we didn't install wiper blades, and we sure as heck didn't go out and try to figure out what's wrong with your taillights. That was the job of a repair shop. Somewhere along the line, AutoZone got the great idea that they should start to try to siphon off business from the repair shops who were not using them. and. And here's a commercial they came out with saying, hey, it's free, it's free. Free's great. Free refills, free blocks of cheese, and free battery tests. We offer free testing because we don't sell people parts they don't need. With our help, you can always fix your car with confidence. Hoods up, America. Get in the zone, auto zone. So there you go, it's free, it's free. Now in all my videos that I say AutoZone goofs, you know what, I have to really say this. There's a lot of blame to go around why I would say that they're goose. The first issue that I would take would be the corporation of AutoZone itself by saying, oh, we're going to test this and test that and run it, diagnostic codes and things like that. It's really the job of a repair shop. If you don't know what you're doing, then you shouldn't be out working on cars like their employees do in the parking lot. Secondly, their employees, the ones that go out there that don't know what they're doing, shouldn't say, tell customers, hey, here's what's wrong with your car, if they don't really know. Most of the time, AutoZone, if they screw up something, will take care of it. But there was a case of an Advance Auto Parts store that didn't do that, and here's a little news clip of that. Advance Auto Parts here in Carolina Pavilion Shopping Center admitted they made a big mistake when installing a new car battery. But they finally did the right thing after Channel 9 started asking questions. And Chia Kennard drives a 2013 Volkswagen Jetta. Her car battery died about three weeks ago. She got a jump start and bought a new battery at this Advance Auto Parts store in South Charlotte. A technician installed the battery. The second that he put it in, uh, my car started going crazy. That's right. The battery was installed backwards. The battery cable was stripped, the fuse was blown, and the amplifier was blown. So I can guarantee at least once a day somewhere in the United States, a battery gets blown up by an AutoZone uh, employee because they don't know what they're doing. However, AutoZone does a better job of taking care of it and probably just pays the whole bill because they're a billion dollar company. So in closing, what I would say is that with 70,000 employees, you've probably got some that are really good and you got some that are really bad. However, that doesn't mean that that should be the place to take your car to if you need good advice. Either learn to do it yourself, watch Redneck Garage, read up learn yourself on how to work on your car or take it to a qualified repair shop because the guys at AutoZone aren't trained to do it. Maybe really nice guys. However, do you really trust your car to a really nice guy that doesn't know anything? <laughs> Gonna get back on the Jeep soon. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Keep turning wrenches.